it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got a fun little comparison to EVs, our long-term Tesla Model Y standard range, and the 2021 Polestar 2. Now, yes, these cars aren't exactly apples to apples. It would definitely be more accurate if we had a Model 3, but this is a Tesla that we've owned now for about six or seven months. We've got a lot of experience with, and most importantly, we just, we have it. So we're gonna go around, kind of compare as objectively as possible the two cars, kind of some of the merits of both, maybe some of the things we think either one is lacking. We're gonna try to keep it as objective as possible, but we will admit, we own this Model Y, so we're much more familiar with it. We know its quirks, we know kind of its ups and its downs. So we're gonna try to keep it as objective as possible, but be aware of our inherent bias, if you will. Now that being said, the Polestar 2, this is an entirely new model from an entirely new brand, Polestar. Now, while it is pretty closely related to Volvo, technically it's because of its parent company, Geely, who does own Volvo, is responsible for a lot of the design and the kind of elements of the modern Volvos that we know. You see a lot of those here in the Polestar, but technically this is a Chinese made car from a Chinese owned company. And there's a lot to like about the Polestar and there's also a lot of head scratching. So if you do wanna see more dedicated coverage of the Polestar 2, we've got a review, we've got a test of the Harman Kardon audio system, and we have an efficiency test. We have all sorts of coverage on the Tesla Model Y as well. So if you do wanna see coverage on range tests, sound system test is coming soon, I promise. We'll put the links in the description for all of those videos. So this is technically a sedan, although it is lifted up quite a bit. It's powered by two electric motors, making about 400 horsepower total. It's got 75 kilowatt hours of usable battery. We found it to be incredibly efficient, even more so on the highway than its EPA estimated range. And it's really nice to drive, as we'll see when we go out driving in a little bit. Coming in the back, while it does look like a sedan, it does technically have a lift back. So you can do a decent amount of storage, not quite as much cargo space as the Model Y, but you would probably get some more usable storage than in a Tesla Model 3 because of this pass-through design. Not nearly as much of an underfloor storage, but some nets, some nifty little features, and still a little bit of versatility for storage. Coming into the back, before we open the door, you notice you do get conventional door handles, not something you get in the Model Y, and it feels quite solid. This is a very nice pull, very easy to understand. Also back here, you notice manual charging port. I think Tesla is the only brand that I know of outside of maybe Audi and Porsche, the more luxury EVs that gives you a power opening power port. And that's actually really nice because when you put your charger cord away and walk away, it is, it's definitely convenient to have something that will power open because you won't believe how often you walk away and forget to close these. Into the back seat, you notice fairly tight and you do have to watch your head getting in from this as we noticed on our live drive, it kind of comes up and down and it's a little intrusive. But other than that, five foot 10, I've got a decent amount of room in here. You've got knee room, head room, very much like the Model Y, you have a panoramic roof, no ability to cover it, just all one big glass piece. It doesn't seem quite as tinted as the Model Y. You definitely get some sun intrusion, but it's not awful. Materials are kind of an interesting mixture between, it's not leather, it's not rubber, it's probably some sort of synthetic material that's supposed to be environmentally friendly or whatever. It's a little scratchy, doesn't feel too bad, but I'm not a big fan of the gray color. I don't really like gray in most things. But you do have some air vents back here, heated rear seats, USB-C ports for power, a flip down armrest, but other than that, fairly simple rear. So now let's head over and check out the back seat and trunk area of the Model Y. You can see, for some reason, Tesla still uses plastic wheel covers, even though every other electric vehicle brand seems to be able to make some sort of, uh, of wheel that is both efficient and not plastic. So, yeah, I mean, you could take these off, you're gonna lose maybe five to 10% of efficiency though. Also a power lift gate for the Model Y. Comes on open much larger as you can see. I mean, obviously this is technically an SUV, whereas that technically is a sedan, but it's still worth pointing out because they're similar efficiency and Model Y actually costs less than the Polestar 2. Plenty of space back here. We've gotten some really large objects. We have a huge underfloor storage compartment. You can see we keep some grocery bags in there, lots of space. And if that's not enough for you, you've got this next one. You can see we, we put some things that we kind of like to have in the car, some blankets, a charger, an extension cable, an umbrella, things like that. And then if both of those still aren't enough for you, you've got your side uh, 
storage wells that go down there and provide even more storage. You can also fold the seats down from back here, very easy, just go and you get all that much more space, 68 cubic feet of cargo room, obviously a plus for the Model Y. Coming into the back seat, you do have the kind of annoying door handles that Tesla utilizes for the 3 and the Y. Yeah, they're probably a little bit more efficient, but it's kind of a two-handed affair. If you're coming at it from the right angle, you can sort of do it thumb in, pull out. But oftentimes I find myself having to kind of walk in, push it that way, pull it this way. And when you've got passengers getting in your car, if they've never used a Tesla door handle before, it takes a little while to explain to them how it works. Should also point out, power charging port open. So you power that up, you just tap it, it comes right open, plug in, very easy to do. Getting in the back, definitely more space. Right now I'm sitting sort of upright, but these seats recline quite a bit. So I can push it way back and then I'm very reclined. Plenty of headroom, this frame elements not quite as much in the way. Plenty of knee room, shutting the door. I've got flip down armrest with some grippy cup holders. Vents and USB-C ports, some door pockets. You can also see the classic Tesla panoramic roof, which as I said, is a little bit more tinted. And other than that, fairly comfortable place to be. One more thing before getting into the front seat is the frunks. So the Model Y has quite a sizable frunk. I'm going to pop it open. You can very much see this is an intended cargo area. It's hard. Apparently still some water in here from the last time it rained. We keep some items in there regularly. Plenty of space in the frunk. The Polestar also has a frunk. Still usable, but not nearly as large. And here. Still got to kind of flip this little switch like you're opening a, trunk, or a hood. There you go. Just about enough space for a charger cable, maybe a pair of shoes or something like that if you wanted to put those up there. And it is carpeted. Okay, let's get into the driver's seat of both of these vehicles. We're going to start out with the Model Y. Take a look around. Clearly, the design language for Tesla is minimalist. And a lot of people like that. And I got to admit, I do as well. They point out that you don't need to take up a whole bunch of center area with a drive line or anything. So might as well keep it simple. It allows Tesla to keep costs down. And even after owning this car for seven months now, I, I haven't uh, minded, if you will, any of the simplicity, simplicity. It just, it works. Yeah. Obviously Tesla pioneered the large screen, but I still think they do it about the best. All these controls down here are always there. Climate, heated seats, etc., volume, very easy to get to. Yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve to get around the rest of the screen, but once you sort of learn where everything is, everything reacts super well, it's very quick, and the menus aren't very deep. So if you want to get to something, it's often just two clicks and maybe a little bit of a scroll away. And there are a few shortcuts to get used to. And the rest of the controls are very simple in the Tesla as well. You have your drive selector right here. You got your blinker, some windshield wiper controls, some controls here for cruise control and audio. And that's about it. Let's get a little bit of air con going. Just a simple formula in the Model Y, but it works. Some people might be a bit turned off, think that they're not getting as much for their money as you might in other brands, and I think that's true. And yeah, there are a lot of aspects about the Tesla that, that it is kind of like driving a big golf cart. But I enjoy it. Nathan, you enjoy it, right? I do enjoy it. At the end of the day, a lot of kind of which car do you like better is going to come down to personal preference. But I do think one of the things that sort of matches the Polestar and the Tesla together are they're both kind of futuristic. When we drove the Mach-E, there was a lot about the Mach-E that sort of went to make it more comfortable for someone who is just used to conventional cars. Whereas the Polestar has a lot of uh, technology kind of differences and Tesla obviously does as well. One of the things a lot of people talk about with Tesla is the lack of a gauge in front of you to tell you your speed and everything. But people don't realize to take your eyes from here and look down to there, where it is in the Polestar, is actually further away than to take your eyes and look to here, where it is in the Tesla. So I, I have never once been driving this car, compared to all of the cars we drive, 
for work here. I've never once been like, man, it's inconvenient to look here for speed. I'd have to agree with that. It's it's almost nicer in a way when you're just on the highway and have the crew set not to have something blocking your vision. Yeah. We've put over 12,000 miles on this car and I've never once been aggravated or annoyed by the driving feel, the driving, uh, anything about the ergonomics of the car. Even the uh, windshield wipers, like a lot of people like to complain about, typically you just have them on auto, but if it's bothering you, you just do a quick tap on, on, on the stock or right here and turn them on to a specific speed. That's what I noticed too when I was driving. It's like, for my car, there's a little di dial on the stock. It's just as much of a hassle is getting to that. Right. Yeah. One thing both the Tesla and the Polestar do well is the screen is within a nice reach. We were driving that G70 last week and you had to move your body forward a lot to get to where the screen is. Tesla, as at least for my arm's length, is within an arm's length away. And as we'll see in a minute, the Polestar is as well. One of the big advantages the Model Y has for it is weight. This thing is much lighter, it's 800 pounds lighter than the Polestar. That being said, this is the standard range rear wheel drive car that is no longer for sale. So you cannot get this light of a Model Y anymore. This one only has about a 55 kilowatt hour battery. So 20 kilowatt hours less than the Polestar 2. So that's gonna save some weight. Also one fewer motor, it's only rear wheel drive. But even a long range, all-wheel drive Model Y weighs about 4,300 pounds, still 400 pounds lighter than the Polestar 2. And so when you toss it around corners like this, the, the Tesla feels... Oh, geez, what was that? That is the garage door opener. <laughs> this, this, that, this corner is so hard and grips so well that it literally took the garage door opener. <laughs> and that, that's not... That's it doesn't grip on there super tight, I, I will admit, tight, but, but that's funny. <laughs> Sorry I, about that. Yeah, this thing has a lot of character, and it's kind of like driving an RC car around. The steering ratio is very quick. It's only two turns lock to lock, and it's kind of a small steering wheel, too. So between the, the tight damping, which we'll talk about here in a second, the quick steering ratio, and the lighter weight, this car feels more playful. It feels like you can toss it around, have more fun with it. On the flip side of that, the suspension is so tightly damped that when you go over these bumps, you feel them. I mean, it really resonates into the cabin. The suspension has calmed down a little bit, but with the warmer weather, the fluid's moving a little bit better and they've broken in some, but you feel a lot of these expansion joints and it's not exactly comfortable. And Nathan really noticed that in the back seat of this car, you feel a lot of the bumps. You, you really do. Hit this at 45. It's not like a, a sports car shaking your teeth out, but it's certainly not a luxury ride. Also, with that lighter weight comes a lack of sound deadening. You can tell that some of the more traditional type brands and Polestar included, Polestar includes more sound deadening in their car. It's quieter inside. The Model Y is very echoey. You hear a lot of the road imperfections when you go over them kind of resonating through the tires. Even though this is double paned glass, even though the OE tires have foam in them to keep them quieter, this is just a loud car. There's no getting around that. I really like driving the Model Y around. It just makes for a nice car in just about all driving scenarios. Let's do a little zero to 60 test here. It is at 78% charge. Electric vehicles are very easy to launch. Doesn't take a lot of rocket science. So it's certainly quick, and the cool thing is it keeps continuing to pull well up to illegal speeds. Power's always there, and I mean, it's it's quick, even for this being the slowest Tesla that they've made. The turning radius in the Model Y is horrendous. Despite having a very tight steering ratio, the wheels they just don't turn that far. One part where both the Model 3 and the Model Y really beat the Polestar is interior storage space. You've got this giant storage well down here, all sorts of room. You can pull this up, get even more. You've got two wireless phone chargers, which is something you rarely see in a vehicle. Love having that because Alyssa and I, when we're both taking a road trip, can put them both there and get charged. You also have this with a little tray and even more underneath it. So much space. Now, while the Model Y's design, both outside and inside, might seem simple and like you're not getting much bang for your buck for some people, other people appreciate it as effective and 
optimized and sort of a minimalist design that should be appreciated. One of my biggest complaints with Tesla is just the fact that their range reporting is not very accurate. Tesla's EPA estimated range is an ideal situation. If you are driving kind of medium speeds, mixed driving, 45, 50 miles per hour in warm weather, yes, you can achieve the EPA rated range. But you get this thing on the highway doing 70 miles per hour, you're getting like 180 to 190 miles of electric range, whereas the EPA estimated is 244. Now on the Polestar, EPA estimated is 233, and we got 247 on our test. So it's, it's a lot of the manufacturers choose to report their ranges a little bit lower, a little bit more conservative, so you can realistically get them in the real world. That's the one thing that I wish Tesla would do is just be a little bit more honest. It's okay to have a little bit smaller number. People, st people are still gonna like your cars, trust me. All right, let's hit in the Polestar. Getting into the Polestar. Quick shout out, I really like the exterior mirrors. They look so nice and bezel-less. Again, not a huge fan of the gray. Overall, I, I like the design. It's so much more tight in here. It's yeah. really a lot smaller, more uh, cozy-ish. Big complaint on the Polestar is you're paying $60,000 and you have a manually adjusted steering wheel. I've always complained about that with Volvo. Some people have tried to tell me it's a safety thing. Like it won't, uh, in an accident, it's safer to have it latched in like that. I don't care. I would still rather yeah. just have an electronically adjustable thing. Right off the bat, you notice how much less storage space there is in here. You have a wireless device charger, kind of a random blank spot there. Uh, one cup holder here, one cup holder in here with a very small bit of storage there. Technically, I think this is removable, but it's, I don't think you're supposed to do it regularly because it's a pain to get in and out. This does slide forward. And other than that, you have a glove box and these little side storage things down low. I mean, if you're in here with uh, two adults, they each got a pair of sunglasses, a phone, a book, some wallet. snacks, drinks, wallet. I mean, you got a little bit of your door pocket as well, but it's gonna fill up really quick. And just like the Tesla, no sunglass storage area. This sun is also really beaming in here. I mean, this, this, roof, this roof just does not tinted quite as much. Designed in Sweden, I guess. <laughs> also, I'm surprised how much room this shifter takes up. I mean, it's this whole section. This could easily be storage, and yet you're taking it up with this little shifter. You do have a nice 360 degree camera, which you can press there. That you do not get in the Tesla, although you do get cameras around the Tesla, you just don't have one in front. The Tesla has parking sensors. I don't think this does. Nope, no beepers. Another thing I'm surprised the Polestar doesn't have, which the, Volvo, uh, the Tesla doesn't have either, is turning headlights. Like when you go around a corner, neither yeah. car has uh, an adapter turning headlights, and neither car has cold seats. What's up with that? You do get one pedal driving in both cars, and I'll say the regen is very similar. Uh, this definitely has more power. It's heavier, but it but it does it is faster. Now, obviously, if we were driving a dual motor Model Y, they'd be much more similar. Also, I really like this adjustable steering feel, which the Tesla has as well, but the Tesla steering, even in its lightest setting, is still fairly heavy. This is a very, very light steering. The Polestar 2 is running Android Automotive, not to be confused with Android Auto. It's, it's a system with some learning curve. Nathan, when you drove around a little bit, did you find it intuitive? Did you find it confusing? I mean, it's one of those things where it's, not very welcoming. I didn't find myself messing with it because I was just like, all right, I'm just going to, like, uh, it's, it's going to take me so long to mess with it. It's not even going to be worth it to change what, what I want to change, which I think was the climate at one point. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a learning curve, and the Tesla has a learning curve, too. I will say, while it looks really sharp, the screen does, the colors, it, everything's very dark, so it's a bit tough to see when the sun's blasting you in the face like this. But Nathan and I both agree that the driving of the Polestar 2 is very good. It's got a good chassis, a lot of power, nice steering feel. It's, it's a pleasant car to drive around. It's pleasant in a different way than the Tesla. The Tesla is pleasant like driving an RC car or a go-kart. This feels a little bit more traditional, would you agree? Yes. A lot of understeer. Was not able to take that corner nearly as fast as I was in the Tesla. 
it takes the smaller road imperfections much better. At first, Nathan thought it had thicker tires, and I did too, but we looked at it, they're both uh, 45. It just absorbs the bumps a little bit better. And these are very nice Olin's dampers on this car. Although to adjust them, you gotta crawl under and actually manually adjust them. Which, to be fair, it's better than not having it at all. Though. Yeah, I agree. The Polestar is neat, and I think it's a good jumping off place for the Polestar brand to continue to make new cars. But the Polestar 2, it's cool, but I just, I, I, it wouldn't be my first car to recommend to most people. I, that's like the same thing for $65,000. I mean, you could have a Tesla Model Y dual motor. You could have a... I think you can have a Model Y Performance almost for that price. Yeah. Yeah. Or a Mach, Mach-E. Fully tr tricked out Mach-E. Yep. Yeah. Mach-E GT. You could have a Chevy Bolt <laughs> if you like having fires. It's a hot car. Yep. One thing we should point out is that you can still get the $7,500 federal tax credit here in America on the Polestars, which you cannot get with the Teslas. So that's definitely something to consider. It's going to bring the overall cost down. Why can't you get, get it on the Teslas? Because the way the law was is it's only applicable for the first 200,000 cars that a manufacturer oh. makes. And Tesla's built way more than that. So this has got to be a little bit faster, but oh, a lot faster. It uh, it's not so dramatic that you feel like you're missing something in the Model Y. And again, if you were to get a Model Y dual motor, then you'd be in better shape. But the turning radius is certainly better. Not as good as the ID4's turning radius, though. Merits of the Polestar. A little more unique, um, a little bit more conventional in terms of its driving feel. You do have a gauge cluster, which looks nice and it's just very functional. I do really like having the baked in Google Maps and some of the Android automotive features of the Polestar 2. I think the car looks excellent. Obviously, that's a bit subjective. Some people prefer the Tesla look, some people can't stand the Tesla looks. It's quieter, it's smoother, and the range is definitely more accurate than the Polestar. For the Model Y, you're getting more space, you're getting a little bit lower cost, you're getting the supercharger network, which is huge, very simple to use, very simple to navigate, so for road trippers, the Tesla's going to be a better bet. You're getting a more advanced technology feel, um, although these are both very close in terms of feeling futuristic. You're definitely getting sort of welcomed into an, an ownership club, if you will. Uh, there's, there's definitely something to say about Tesla ownership and overall the car feels a bit more futuristic and that bigger frunk Some of the things both cars do equally well. They both have very good sound systems both uh, I'd say about an A tier for both of them Both feel like uh, you're getting something new and different and they're, they're both very efficient And both cars you can just get in put your foot on the brake put it in gear and drive away Nice. I found I have an easier time doing that in this car than the Model Y. The Model yeah. Y takes a little second before yeah. I don't know you can why. put it in here. I just you don't know why. <laughs> ha ha ha. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you got some good insight on both cars. If you want to see more specifics on either of them, check the links in the description. Thanks to Nathan for coming along. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.